unchanged, unchanging, surrendered on to die. Was there a love so wondrous that from his heavenly Let us pray. Almighty Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your Son to be born of woman and to die on a cross, so that through the obedience of one man, estrangement might be dissolved for all. Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death, that we may love in union with you in the kingdom of your promise. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Then they came to a place called, named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour may pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. 
He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. He kissed him, and this they laid hands on him and arrested him. This cup might pass me by, yet let it happen as you will. If I must die, behold, behold, the word of the on which is on. 
as surely he has borne our tears, is wounded by our sin, and yet he opens not his mouth, that we might live. My friends have left and gone. Oh, loving Father, take my life into your hands. Behold, behold. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, you have given the human race, Jesus Christ, our Savior, as a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Help us bear witness to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share in his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and if within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, 
I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard him, heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy! And the guards greeted him with blows. Earthly kings rise up in revolt. Princes conspire together against the Lord and his anointed. Why do the nations protest and the peoples grumble in vain? Kings on earth rise up and princes plot together against the Lord and his anointed. Let us break their shackles and cast off their chains. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them, then speaks to them in anger, terrifies them in wrath. I myself have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord who said to me, you are my son today. Today I am your father. Only ask it of me and I will make your inheritance the nations, your possession the ends of the earth. With an iron rod you shall shepherd them, like a clay pot you will shatter them. And now, kings, give heed. Take warning, rulers on earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling bow down in homage lest God be angry and you perish from the way in a sudden blaze of anger. Happy are all who take refuge in God. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord God, you gave the peoples of the world as the inheritance of your only Son. You crowned him as King of Zion, your holy city, and gave him your church to be his bride. As he proclaims the law of your eternal kingdom, may we serve him faithfully and so share his royal power forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peter followed Jesus at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. And while he was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, you too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. 
Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept.
Let us pray. Lord God, you desired to keep from us your indignation, and so did not spare your Son, Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our sins. We are your prodigal children, but confessing our sins, we come back to you. Embrace us that we may rejoice in your mercy together with Christ, your beloved Son. We ask this in his name. Amen. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with them, the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. They sought to take my life by violence. Lord, punish me no more in your anger. In your wrath, do not chastise me. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. My flesh is afflicted because of your anger. My frame aches because of my sin. My iniquities overwhelm me a burden beyond my strength. Foul and festering are my sores because of my folly. I am stooped and deeply bowed. All day I go about mourning. My loins burn with fever. My flesh is afflicted. I am numb and utterly crushed. I wail with anguish of heart. My Lord, my deepest yearning is before you. My groaning is not hidden from you. My heart shudders. My strength forsakes me. The very light of my eyes has failed. Friends and companions shun my pain. My neighbors stand far off. Those who seek my life lay snares for me. They seek my misfortune. They speak of ruin. They, they plot, plot treachery all the day. But I am like the deaf, hearing nothing, like the dumb, saying nothing, like someone who does not hear, who has no answer ready. Lord, I wait for you. O Lord, my God, answer me. 
for I fear they will gloat, exult over me if I stumble. I am very near to falling. My pain is with me always. I acknowledge my guilt and grieve over my sin. But many are my foes without cause, a multitude of enemies without reason, repaying me evil for good, harassing me for pursuing good. Forsake me not, O Lord. My God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, my Lord and my salvation. Let us pray. O powerful and eternal God, for proclaiming the truth, your Son Jesus Christ is condemned to death by crucifixion. Stir up your love in all our hearts so that we might be ever faithful to all that you have told us and fear nothing more than the loss of your friendship through sin. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The soldiers led Jesus away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him they knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take.
Let us pray. All-powerful God, for the suffering and death of your Son, strengthen and protect us in our weakness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the church against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of Egypt from, from slavery, slavery to, to freedom, freedom, but you, but you led, led your, your Savior, Savior to the cross. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. For 40 years, I led you safely through the desert. I fed you with manna from heaven and brought you to a land of plenty, but you led your Savior to the cross. Holy is God, holy and strong. 
Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. What more could I have done for you? I planted you as my fairest vine, but you yielded only bitterness. When I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink, and you pierced your Savior with a lance. Holy is God, holy and strong. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For your sake, I scourged your captors and their, and their firstborn, firstborn sons, but you brought your scourges down on me. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you from slavery to freedom and drowned your captors in the sea, but you handed me over to your high priest. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I opened the sea before you, but you opened my side with a spear. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud, but you led me to Pilate's court. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I bore you up with manna in the desert, but you struck me down and scourged me. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I gave you saving water from the rock, but you gave me gall and vinegar to drink. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. For you I struck down the kings of Canaan, but you struck my head with a reed. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I gave you a royal scepter, but you gave me a crown of thorns. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I raised you to the height of majesty, but you have raised me high on a cross. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Let us pray. Father, in your plan of salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, accepted the cross and freed us from the power of the enemy. May we come to share the glory of his resurrection, for he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why so far from my call for help, from my cries of anguish? My God, I call by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I have no relief. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the glory of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you rescued them. To you they cried out and they escaped. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm, hardly human, scorned by everyone despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They curl their lips and jeer. They shake their hands at me. You relied on the Lord. Let him deliver you. If he loves you, let him rescue you. Yet you drew me forth from the womb, made me safe at my mother's breast. Upon you I was thrust from the womb, since birth you are my God. Do not stay far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Fierce bulls of Bashan encircle me. They open their mouths against me, lions that rend and roar. Like water, my life drains away. All my bones grow soft. My heart has become like wax. It melts away within me. As dry as a potsherd is my throat, my tongue sticks to my palate. You lay me in the dust of death. Many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in on me. So wasted are my hands and feet that I can count all my bones. They stare at me and gloat. They They divide divide my my garments among among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, Lord, do not stay far off. My strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my forlorn life from the teeth of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my poor life from the horns of wild bulls. Then I will proclaim your name to the assembly. In the community, I will praise you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, on the edge of sadness when all seemed lost, you restored to us the Savior we thought defeated and conquered. Help us, we beg you, so to empty ourselves of self-concern that we might see your hand in every failure and your victory in every defeat. These things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom when the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last. He said, truly, This man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joses, and Salome. 
These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Let us pray. Father, as your son was raised on the cross, his mother Mary stood by him, sharing his sufferings. May your church be united with Christ in his suffering and death, and so come to share in his rising to new life, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb.
Please kneel. Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inherited lands have been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become orphans, fatherless, widowed our mothers. Water we drink, we must buy. For our own wood, we must pay. On our necks is the yoke of those who drive us. We are worn out, but allowed no rest. To Egypt we submitted, and to Assyria to fill our need of bread. Our fathers who sinned are no more, but we bear their guilt. The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dance has turned into mourning. The garlands have fallen from Hearts are sick. And to this our eyes are forgiven. You, O Lord, are the throne forever. forever. Your throne stands from age to age. Why then should you forget us? Abandon us so long a time. Lead us back to you, O Lord, that you may be restored. <clears throat> Give us anew such days as we had of old. Please stand. Let us pray. Father, may we, we receive your forgiveness and mercy as we celebrate the passion and death of the Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 